The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not, in any way, reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. Hi everyone, it's Ian Binyon. You might be wondering what on earth happened to me. Actually, not that much. Just a lot of virtual paperwork. You see, I have been juggling a number of jobs and gigs that I have to focus on at the expense of this channel. I know it's hard, but it is the sacrifice I am willing to take so I can develop not only my craft through equipment and training, but also have the means to fund such equipment and training, if you know what I mean. Sadly, this also meant that I have been missing Sunday Mass because of the fact that I have to work my ass off all the time. Even these relatively easy to edit and upload videos take a lot of time, and it sucks. Anyway, I would like to tell you that I'm still alive and well, and I still look forward to doing more quality videos for every single one of my 67 subscribers and the rest of you who have not yet subscribed. Now to kick things off, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Philippine Armorial website and the International Association of Amateur Heralds for assisting me in developing my personal arms, which is displayed on your screen right now. I have also developed the personal arms of my father, my brother, and even my uncles and male cousins on both sides. I'm not that good with Photoshop, and I'm having a hard time developing arms for females, okay? I made some attempts for my mother, my sister, and my girlfriend, but I need to polish or redesign them. You're just a fucking peasant. I'm not sure a herald, boy. One of my pet peeves, and maybe one of my stims, is to look at heraldry and vexillology. FYI, stimming is not just for neurodivergent people, you judgmental neurotypical pricks. And because I have also been tinkering with Photoshop for the longest time now, it got me thinking. Since I will eventually leave the building, I do need to at least make sure that I have something to leave behind for my offspring, and in the process, the offspring of my relatives in my generation level. Now, unless I own a house and I do hope I could have one, what I would like to leave them behind with is their faith in God, their education, and a piece of my ad identity and that of their own. A family branding, if you may stretch it that way. While royalties have the privilege of systems and institutions to develop arms for themselves, modern technology made sure that it could be possible for commoners to develop and register their own. Since I have this now as part of my personal branding, I would have to make the fateful decision. The old logo will be gone soon. Or would be incorporated into the family arms as charges. Thus, the days of the old logo are numbered. And since I am in the process of rebranding again, I might as well change the name of this channel to simply being IJR Productions, after the initials of my name. I would still retain the Intrepid Ian branding, but in a limited role as a flourish to my name, and as the name of my general flagship commentary format, The Intrepid Show, TIS for short. Salty Reactions, Rinyon Reviews, and Biglaang Live would still retain their formats, but would have a tis a uh, added to the titles as a wordplay to the archaic English contraction tis from the term this is. The changes will be effective by October. With that out of the way, we can now discuss the updates and the Axie Infinity cyber wars on Philippine social media. Honestly, while the arguments for and against the game are absolutely great, it's becoming a bloody dumpster fire that it is getting out of hand at this point that Nico David decided to back off from the issue. While I still monitor new content about this for the playlist I created, by the way, the link is in the description below, Attorney Rani Libayan has more than proven himself that Axie Infinity is, for him and his fans, a scam and a Ponzi scheme through the addressing of certain fears, uncertainties, and doubts, or FUDs in investment speak. He challenged Jihaz, the 
pseudonym of the one of the game's developers to answer the questions he and his fans have been reiterating time and time again and attempt to prove him and the fans wrong from a legal standpoint once and for all. However, this righteous arrogance of his was indeed tested in the court of public opinion. The YouTube show Salve Says, presented by financial literacy advocate Salve Duplito and ABS-CBN journalist Warren de Guzman, allegedly invited attorney Libayan for a friendly debate, quote-unquote friendly debate, regarding cryptocurrency, but declined to be on the program. This led to some who criticized attorney Libayan, speculating that he would only engage in debates and discussions where he would win. After all, we cannot blame him for choosing when and, and how he would fight a la Sun too. He is a trial lawyer by profession, and being on YouTube for him was just for fun. It has also come to the attention of Nico David that Attorney Libayan's female assistant is also being targeted by such calumny from the defenders of the game, in which he absolutely despised to the point of almost simping the said female assistant despite the ideological confrontation. And I cannot stress this enough. Nico David and Attorney Libayan do not have any beef with each other. But to give credit where it is due, Attorney Libayan addressed this by apologizing to his fans for allegedly declining the invite and for insisting on bringing the game down not and not focusing on other important legal matters. Again, I can't blame him. One of his duties as a lawyer is to educate the general public inform them about the laws of the land, and even warn them against potential legal, legal ramifications of being involved in, with certain entities, endeavors, gimmicks, and schemes. Methinks that the prevention of the game's legalization in the Philippines is the hill a 30 Libayan would gladly die on. But I digress. I also observed at the time I was writing the script that five of the videos in the playlist I created were hidden for no particular reason. The playlist is 60 plus videos long and each has a playtime of between 10 and 90 minutes, so I cannot pinpoint which of the videos were hidden. As an addition to my personal observations, it is just bizarre that the spectators are making the whole thing bloody worse due to people making ad hominems and blasphemous references. I am not going to list or share the screenshots of these references out of respect to both sides of the argument as well as for my own spiritual well-being because I am in dire need to go to confession. I see three to four weeks as the standard interval, six weeks tops. Anything beyond that is just unbearable. Thanks a lot, COVID. But going back, there is a fear that this supposedly great discussion about a rather mediocre game backed by monetary rewards would, as mentioned earlier, turn into a fucking dumpster fire and it may have happened already. In this case, it is not the arguments themselves that are making it a dumpster fire, it's the people back in the parties involved. I don't know about you, but I call it the personality hooliganism syndrome. Ever since 2016, and maybe way before that, many Filipinos focus more on the people who express their visions and sentiments rather than the things they envisioned and said. In other words, it's basically personality politics on steroids. And social media just debilitated this toxic mindset Filipinos have, which begs the question I got from a good friend of mine. Tayo ba ay gumagalang o nagmamahal lamang sa kapwa o sinasamba na natin sila bilang mga Diyos? Are we merely respecting and loving our neighbors or are we already worshipping them as gods? For my part, and going back to the dumpster fire that is the Axie Infinity Cyber Wars, I ask this, does the opposition to Axie Infinity merely reflect Attorney Libayan's commitment to free legal education to the public, which is absolutely commendable, mind you, or is it fueled with the mindset of cracking down scams and Ponzi schemes, either alleged or confirmed? Only time will tell. And all that said, We interrupt your regular programming. This is a national emergency. Important details will follow. The following message is transmitted at the request of an undisclosed entity and addressed to the executive producer of our operations. 
Intrepid Ian Rignon, alam ko na mayroon ka pang isang gustong sabihin sa video na ito. It turns out, Spock Farnasio has found his way inside Team Payaman. With that said, malamang alam mo na ang dapat mong gawin. <sighs> right. Finally, I would wrap this video up with an apology to a certain YouTuber, Spark Paranasio. You remember my video a few months ago about a certain YouTuber who would like to have a collaboration with Kong DV to the point that he spent a lot of money for a billboard ad? Yes, that guy. It turns out that he happened to have a collaboration within Team Payaman. With that said, that billboard did bring him somewhere, even if it's not Kong TV. Peachy Twice Santos, Eminemedis' ex-girlfriend, because we all know Eman already died, produced a short film archetyping herself and her processing of grief. Filling in Nemedis' role was Farnasio, and some say he researched the looks and mannerisms of the deceased young man. While a lot of folks are shipping these two, it is highly unlikely the collaboration would result in a romance at this time because the short seems to be a manifestation that the grief was still there. But then again, I may be wrong. And in honor of, and for the sake of Emma Nemedes' memory, I would like to take this opportunity to apologize to Farnasio for quote-unquote trolling and outrightly underestimating the dreams and ambitions that he had. While I stand by my st statement that the billboard ad stunt was borderline cringy, I realized that I deserve reaping the bad fruits of all my malice and I have no excuse for my subsequent trolling and outright underestimation of his intent. It was an absolutely bad thing to make those comments and I offered to take down my video about it if that would appease him and his fans. And that's all to it. With all that said, this is E undermining you two at all times. Now more than ever, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, Intrepid Gang, look alive, stay alive, and see you next time. Ian out.